with maybe 25 youth. Some were serious and interested. Others challenged me to keep their attention. But at least Susan Davenport came through and even went on to become a pastor grown from this congregation. Youth group adventures included my first opportunity to snow ski. I wondered if I blew it when I brought back one young man with a broken leg. <laughs> Lucky, luckily, the young feel swiftly. I recall church council retreats at Lutheran Outdoor Ministries and all the adventures we worked to help us to get to know one another better and set to serve the, the goals of Alpine. I recall yet helping push Scott Christensen's heavy car up the ice-covered hill. We made it to the top and quickly entered the warmth and safety of the retreat house. 
<laughs> Mostly I remember the hundreds of people Connie and I met and who became our extended family. Though some have died, many more have joined us, reminding me all the saints here at Alpine, past, present, and of those to come. May God's mission and vision of agape love continue and guide and fill your hearts in the next 75 years. God's peace and joy continue with you, Pastor John and Connie. Our thank yous tonight. We want to thank Emerald Wind Music for their wonderful music tonight. We want to thank ABC Catering for such wonderful service and good food tonight. I want to call on our committee to stand, please. The McVinnies, Carl, John Lindy, Mike, Jean, or, oh. Angel Mike, <laughs> yeah. Kathy, and Glenn, and Aaron. Thank you so much for the work. <laughs> if I forget anybody tonight on thank yous, I'm really sorry. We have a long list. This is not the Academy Awards, but it will be like it. <laughs> we want to thank Vi for the cupcakes. Yes. Pam Hodges for doing the poster. The PowerPoint presentation, Scott Christensen and Scott Dobson and Barb put together. Harriet for taking pictures. <laughs> Lynn for putting up with us and for the program. <laughs> Tim for helping us get ready. The Men's Breakfast Committee, my mom and dad, Les and Carol Johnson, for helping us get set up today with a broken refrigerator. <laughs> And this is not a hint, but this is, all up here it says, all those who will help us clean up tonight. Hmm. <laughs> we, did, we did sell all of our raffle tickets. 1,000 tickets were sold. I thank everyone who bought tickets, who, who um, sold tickets to, were given tickets to sell. I know Barb was very good at saying, could you sell these? Here they are. <laughs> We will be drawing that shortly. Are you going to draw it now? Yeah. You want to draw it now? Everybody good? Chuck's feeling okay, lucky. Now, Chuck's feeling lucky. I need someone who didn't buy a ticket. I'm not trying to call you out. Is there someone? First prize is the diamond ring. No, it's slides.
Pam Branny. Great. Great. Oh, good. Okay. Third prize is $200 to Countryside Meats. I'll just take this now. <laughs> Kathy Munn. thank the people that gave um, donations for the raffle. Everything was donated, so this was all profit, and this profit went to, to reduce the cost of the dinner. And also, these are all take-homes. These are a gift for you. And the, the donations were Kathy Hunt, Glenn McDonald, Diane Baden, Carla Devilson, and Barb and Craig Sheldon that donate the items for the raffle. Thank you. We also wanted to give yes. We also wanted to give a gift to the church for the 75th anniversary. This is something the committee talked about about a year ago. <laughs> This is something the committee talked about about a year ago. That when we have funerals and when we have celebrations for birthdays, a lot of times everybody's sitting in a very low chair and you have to bend over to talk to them. We bought these chairs so that if you're, if you're talking to whoever at a funeral or their birthday or anniversary, you can talk to them about high levels. So these two chairs are also from the 75th anniversary. Um, and this was part of the money that we raised. Thank you. Um, we're going to do a little bit of history now, um, and we kind of we want this to be a little bit interactive, meaning that. You see a picture that you want to comment on, just raise your hand, or if you want to tell a story, um, that's that's good too. So that is going to help me. Here's Tim. Tim, there's some lights that I need turned on. Good evening, everyone. Oh, am I glad this is working? Harriet, that saves the fundraiser for a new sound system.
Christian education system. <clears throat> I don't know the year of the car, sorry. <laughs> Not quite that old. <clears throat> okay, this is the inside of the school, I assume. Yeah. That's the 35 nine cent way help over to help. Decided to change the name to Alpine Lutheran Sunday School. And then this then is when the church was organized with 99 charter members, November 1, 1942. Organized at Alpine Lutheran Church. Those are printed in your uh, program, I see, too. <clears throat> You know, let's take a minute. Are you, if you're related in any way to any of the charter members, would you stand, please, or raise your hand? Let's give them a round of applause.
that cornerstone is still out somewhere, correct? It's in the basement here. It's <coughs> the cornerstone for, for that old church is right on that wall by the water fountain. Yeah, so cool. I, when you go out, you can go look and see. It says 1942 and 1947. Mm, okay, and then one thing I didn't know, we have three cornerstones on the property, correct? correct. One will be the entrance to the office, where Lynn is, right? And then we have sanctuary. The sanctuary, and then we have, that was a sanctuary. Yes. And then we have one for the education one. Yes. Behind the bushes. It's, it's in the vestibule. Vestibule, okay. Okay, you might require, some of you might remember uh, yeah. Laurel Galeen, yeah. who was a tremendous yeah. member of Alpine. In fact, his son, uh, Roger, was it Roger? Yes. Is a, is a preacher. But uh, his dream was to have his church called Christ the Cornerstone Lutheran Church. You know, and that's something to still think about. You think, you know, uh, you ever try to describe somebody how to get to Alpine Church? <laughs> the Alpine Church, oh, I'm not quite out of my road. I'm not quite the hell here. Somewhere in the uh, That's interesting. The three cornerstones might be something to think about. So, laying cornerstones. Uh, Chapel moved in pieces, that's what this slide is here. Uh, and the dedication was on November 8, 1947. Of course, now we're starting to hit the baby boomer era, so it soon became overcrowded, and a campaign started for a new church. And Chris, I'd like you to take us through that a little bit. The new church, what was on those guys? There were five guys that pony up, 500 bucks a piece, and then who were involved in that property? In the property? In the property, yeah. The new property. Uh, was back in my early days. But they, uh, we had an opportunity to buy the land here, where we're located today. And we needed to make that decision and get the money in a hurry. Well, we were, I was on the board of trustees back in those days. We counted every offering every week to make payroll. So we were we were not exactly plush, but they called a meeting inside that little church office, and I was there. And the gentleman talked over, we need to buy this property. Alpine has to move into this property. And those five or six guys raised the money that night in that office, and we went down. And I went downtown and I signed the property, got the bill done, brought it back to Pastor Cornell, and I says, we now own the property. And a few years later, I found out I was illegal to sell her. I should not have signed because I wasn't 21. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we got the property and didn't come and get it now. <laughs> We're all sitting on illegal property. <laughs> so that campaign started, and then uh, that was 1953, we believe, the uh, purchase of the land on Forest View Avenue. What happened to the old building, the old church building? The old uh, church building, I think, it was the burned down. Then on November 2nd, this was now Pastor Piddleson, uh, November 2nd, 1958, we broke ground on the uh, new church. That's the basement of the, that was the basement of the chapel. The reason I know that, I went to kindergarten there. And they had a penalty box, which was the sink in the kitchen, and I spent a lot of time in that sink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we had the choir singing. This is a ceremony at the site, the new site, of course. And then we have Pastor Tillerson laying on the cornerstone, May of 1959, Christ the Cornerstone. And then the following three slides uh, show you a little bit of the construction. This is the praying hands, of course. Very unique. Gordy Allen was uh, the architect of well, his firm, and he had a very prestigious award for the design of this of our church. Uh, 
Now that stained glass behind there, that's another little story. Just got in there and a hailstorm came and took it all out. Some of those windows were, up, were actually up in a choir loft. That's how bad that storm was. And I think, B, that was about the time of your wedding, was it then? Yes. There was a little panic going on. Yes, I think it happened June, the end of June, our wedding was July 16th, and Pastor Kittleson promised that all those windows will be gone, but a few word because in our wedding pictures we still have cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, of course, inside the church. Yeah. And that was dedicated December 1959, just over a year from the uh, groundbreaking. <clears throat> and then, uh, we have many symbolic aspects. Yeah, this one. It shows the arms of Christ outstretched. Do you see it in the window? Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I think Scott already said that the roof line is for praying hands. So there's quite a bit of symbolism in the structure of the church itself. Now, at least of which was Elmer. And Elmer rang the bells up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're dancing a tremendous, tremendous day. Um, I mentioned the architect, uh, that's the award that Alan Pratt and Bates, Gordy Allen, is he here? No. Um, so the sanctuary was complete, but the education was not, and that's where the overcrowding, this is one of the baby boomers, the rolling green area, that's where. Uh, canvassing went on to grow this church. <laughs> Both in 60 and 61, uh, very much overcrowded Sunday school met in the cloak room upstairs, mm -hmm. using a church basement the kitchen of Thompson School. I don't remember very well. There were actually two different Sunday schools at two different times. I think we had 400 kids, something like that, in Sunday school. Now, this is, uh, I was the start of the groundbreaking for the education of 1961. Okay. More groundbreaking. Now that's the cornerstone of the education way. That was which date was 62. And we mentioned the three cornerstones already. The 1942 charter. 47 first permanent building, Sylvan, and then the 59 sanctuary here, and 62 education wings in the best of yeah. Scott, yeah. what happened to the big cross on top? The steeple? You know, the steeple, yeah. We took it down, and it may, it may still be in storage, I don't know. It was in really tough shape. But we wanted, a lot of us wanted to put it back up because we had the, you know, the bell tower in there and all that, but we weren't able to do it. It took a lot of renovation at the time. I wonder if it's out in the garage. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. It might have been. Yeah, but it would be nice to get that back someday. I agree. So that opened in 1963, then the education plan. And then there was a front section. That was complete after that with the education wing. Completing the front. And then now it's 33. Sunday school finally had classrooms. And of course the uh, sanctuary then, going to the side windows. Again, the stained glass that was put in during that period. And of course, you know, the 60s and 70s. We're creating a tremendous growth here. <laughs> There's the choir, the kids' choirs, we had high school choirs, we had senior choirs. Quite a participation by so many members. This is a new member class, if you can imagine. <laughs> some of you might recall the screens, they were very good and musical, were others. Um, and Steve is a pastor from here as well. Steve's reading. 
uh, a number of class and then it's a Sunday school. And then we have a worship, uh, the worship sanctuary, right? You see, this was pretty typical. Full, full, full. And a church, you know, in those days, this was a church picnic. Some of you might recall at Alpine Park, we would have the church picnic, baseball games, and gunny sack races, you name it. And at that point, I think this, the church was still the social center for so many things. Um, baseball team, Luther League Fellowship Group, I mentioned Chippers and the original foursome. This is the 20th anniversary. Okay. Now we already talked about the uh, last front. It's the 25th. This one's kind of interesting because you know Susan. I don't know if there's any others that were in the confirmation class, but. Pastor Ashes can make a big hit with us. We were the first class that had to do three years to get a communion confirmation. It was two years. We were the only class that went to three. So this guy is still real popular with us. <laughs> Some of us probably could have used five years. <laughs> yeah, we must have needed it. So remember that? Yeah. I think we ever did that. Remember, we put the 
had a canopy out there so you could drive up and drop people off. That was a big help. We got too much in the weather. Oh, that was uh, Les Frommater put that together. Never got an Easter Sunday. Sunday school Christmas. Sunday school Christmas. Because I never saw it mentioned again, 
I had read a magazine at Irvismith offering a gift of $3 to anyone who sent in a picture of two or more people enjoying RC Cola. But there was more. If the company decided to use that picture in their advertising, everyone in the picture would receive $25. Never one to pass up such an offer, I began to think of so clever ways to enter. At the time, I was in the midst of organizing a dinner for the Alpine Church Fellowship Group at the local YMCA to be followed by a boat ride on the Rock River. On the sign-up chart, I promised dinner, a boat ride, and a surprise. At the dinner, I revealed this surprise. I told the group about the RC contest, COLA contest and asked if they would like to participate. All were more than willing and pledged their potential winnings to a Carpet Fellowship Hall Fund, which I created on the spot to add me to my entry. When we got on the boat, we gave each one a can of RC COLA. I had also prepared a huge banner for us to hold which spelled out the date and occasion and had arranged for a member photographer to take pictures. What fun we had that night, laughing, singing, posing with our upraised cans of RC Cola on the deck of the Forest City Queen. It was an evening to remember, made extra special by adding the excitement of anticipation and talk about faith. Of the 45 people present that evening, many of whom were senior citizens, I was perhaps the only one who had doubts that we would win the grand prize. From that evening in August until the following January, when I received a phone call informing me that we were a first prize winner, not one Sunday had passed without someone asking me if we had won. So for five long months, a lot of people had benefited by having something to look forward to. And that looking forward had created a new bond between us. But the tangible benefits of that particular contest were even more dramatic. One, a full page ad, not to stand up. <laughs> a picture of the entire Alpine Fellowship group enjoying RC Cola. And many of those people on there were charter members of uh, Alpine. Pastor Onquist is there, Roger Grove Weston, March, I'm sure. And <laughs> a lot of, uh, other people. The $1,125 prize became seed money that along the way triggered spin-off purchases of carpeting for the church nursery and a stained glass window for our newly remodeled sanctuary. Three, it was an opportunity for all church members to work together on such fundraising events as a magical dinner by the way, we had a real uh, fall head at that dinner. Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, corn boil, fabulous salad luncheon, and so forth, to raise the balance of the money needed for the carpeting at Fellowship Hall. And for the thrill of reaching our goal and seeing the carpet being laid just one week before our 40th uh, anniversary celebration. And I'll go on to tell you another church-related event connected with contesting. Remember when McDonald's was offering family reunions for prizes? Daily prizes for $10 certificates for meals at McDonald's. At the close of the contest, each of the McDonald's contest, uh, stores was giving away a trip 
for someone from anywhere in the country of entry for a free vacation. Well, our family had just won a daily prize and decided to enjoy a free Sunday breakfast. During the conversation, we talked about our pastor who was recovering from surgery in Chicago, 80 miles away. I thought it would be fun to put an entry in the box for him. And, to, and we, he, I didn't know his home address, so we used the church address. Then we wrote him a note on the back of a placeman, told him we had just entered the McDonald's contest. The trip prizes were announced in September. I was not a winner, nor was anyone I knew. I was dis disappointed, of course, but soon forgot it. Early in December, our pastor's son was to be married. Our pastor's wife, Lucille, a, is a charming letter who has a just as charming twin sister. Unfortunately, a week before the wedding, Lucille heard from her sister, who was also married to a minister, that they could not afford the tickets to come to the wedding. It was extremely disappointing. But miracles do happen. The day after receiving a, the letter from his sister-in-law, our pastor received a call at the church. He had won a free family reunion from McDonald's. Two people could fly to Rockford from anywhere in the country. All expenses paid. The person who had originally won the trip could not use it by the end of the year and had to extinguish it. Our pastor's name was drawn as the alternate winner. I will never forget the joy as they shared this happy occasion together and all because of a contest. <coughs> Contesting in the church, a strange combination, not from my vantage point. <laughs> Thank you, Harriet. So many times over the years, if there was something that needed to be done, you know you could call on Harriet. She was there pushing everybody along. This whole thing, that all was paid for too, I think, Harriet, before we laid any cards at all. Okay, so we move on to Pastor Rick. This is Reformation Sunday, and this is a uh, uh, teaching Martin Luther, I see. So then uh, came a new mission, and that of course was the uh, Luther Academy at Alpine in cooperation with the Rockford Lutheran Schools. That was established in 1997, and in this slide here, uh, this is the demos president, the John Finch contractor, Pastor Rick, and his uh, principal. Uh, construction of the gym, they broke ground for the gym, and the administration wing, so that was the year 2000. That's again the trusted acceptor being constructed. So that was, that campus was complete then and dedicated in 2001. Very, very impressive from what we started with just the, the raw property. We've got a picture, I think. School kids in, in classroom there. So, then, <clears throat> oh, this is, look at this, this is last year's Christmas program for the school, for the school. Look at the number of kids participating. This is wonderful. And what? This is one. Just for the Yeah, okay. Pastor and council. So going forward, there's been challenges. I think in 07, uh, the academy became Alpine Academy. We went on our own under the ownership of the congregation. And this year, we're recognizing 20 years of the school. Bob, did you want to say anything about our, the school's anniversary? 
I didn't have anything prepared to say, <laughs> but yes, this is our 20th year, and we're celebrating all year um, as 20 years, and 10 years for the naming of it as Alpine Academy. Um, so we've got other things planned that the church members will be invited to participate in uh, through our 10 years as Alpine Academy. So look forward to a few more things. The celebration will continue. This is working. This is working. Working here at John Lending. No, Pastor Dan, except for the amount of one, and that's been going on quite a while now. As well. This is more school. More school pictures, and of course, there's us. So, um, and we'll move forward. You can see the consistency in Alpine has always been dealing with youth and Christian education. From the time Stan Davis uh, started everything at Alpine School to the uh, Camp Grant Chapel to this facility here, always here in the kids, Christian education, and then having their own school now. Uh, what a tremendous legacy for Alpine. It fits so well into our home, you know, our whole uh, ministry, really, the gospel uh, being brought from this place. So. We want to continue to move forward with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just mention the symbolism in this particular. Well, this one is yeah. one of my favorites too, because you'll notice you'll notice three crosses, right? Yes. <coughs> it's like the Seventy or uh, like Calvary, yeah. like Calvary, and then the message of the whole life of Christ on in the faceted glass. People from all over come to really admire that. So anyway. <coughs> We need to continue to help. We've got challenging times. Uh, I know what uh, talking to Terry Hodges recently, the membership is down for mainstream churches quite considerably over the last 10 years. So we're going to have to do some things. And maybe that's like uh, <coughs> other models. We'll create a little chaos and try and stay. We'll see. We're going to have to uh, work together and, and continue to. After all, Lutherans, we are the reformers, right? So we need to. Leave. We need to lead the way. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure I've forgotten things tonight. So many of you, I'm thinking about mission this morning. So many different, all of you that have had key roles there, and I just want to, at this point, recognize every one of you, and let's give Alpine 75th anniversary a loud round of applause. everybody has done so much. Um, I do want to, to recognize Barb Shelton and Dead Uncle Sandy who have done a great job as our coach. Two quick announcements. Uh, there are two special services coming up here at Outland. I do want to invite everyone here to be a part of. Tomorrow is our celebration Sunday when we gather together just to celebrate uh, what God has done um, uh, and what is God's going to do over the next year. So I do want to, to remind everybody we're going to have one service tomorrow at 10 a.m., but do invite you to come and be a part of our Celebration Sunday service tomorrow. And then uh, a week from Wednesday, we do have our Thanksgiving evening service here. Wednesday uh, at 7 o'clock, we're going to be giving thanks to God for all he has done in the past year. So we want to uh, invite you to our Thanksgiving evening service that's a week from Wednesday. There is a service here on Tuesday uh, afternoon, uh, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving at 11 o'clock uh, during the day. Uh, we have a joint service with Alpine Academy, and then we come down here for a Thanksgiving meal with all of the students. And so everybody's invited to be part of all of those special services that are coming up. Let's close with a prayer and a benediction. <laughs> Lord, dear Jesus, we thank you so much for doing such an incredible job in our lives. There are so many wonderful stories that we heard tonight, uh, but through all of those stories, uh, we hear your spirit, see your spirit moving uh, in us uh, to give us thanks, to give us grace, uh, and we give you thanks for all that you have done in the past 75 years. 
May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. 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 Amen.